I've made it back to the 3D printed Habitat for Humanity house in Tempe, Arizona. It looks like it's about complete, but they're still working on the stick built homes to the left. They've completed the exterior, they've painted, and it looks nice. They've put some clever finishing touches, some beams, and it really looks a lot cleaner and more modern than it did last time I was here. From the drone footage you can see they've also included solar panels, which is something they mentioned, but I think I forgot to include in the video. So the house to the right is has some kind of concrete finish on it. I don't know if that's how they'll finish the other two homes to the left. I just am driving by on my way to Las Vegas for the World of Concrete event, so I didn't get permission to go inside today. Maybe they've completed some of that. Maybe it's still a work in progress. Hopefully we can check back uh, on the way back towards the east, uh, see what's going on. I'll reach out to Dusty. World of Concrete was a huge success. Not only was Kobod there, but I also ran into a ton of other teams at various stages of their 3D printed construction journeys, including brand new startups that haven't even printed anything yet, all the way to companies like Kobod printing all around the world. Kobod's close partner Perry and many other construction companies with forward thinking technologies were also in attendance at the conference. In upcoming videos, I'll cover geopolymers, automated demolition machines, and a whole suite of brand new technologies we've never looked at on this channel. This project was printed by Perry, a close partner with Kobod using a Kobod machine. Like the house in Germany, this house includes unique quirks and features that highlight what the 3D printer is capable of. Perry has implemented some of the most clever and unique designs of all the companies printing concrete. So hats off to them. Hopefully they continue to innovate and change the way design is looked at for 3D printed buildings. Looking closer at these two houses to the left, they're surrounded with this chicken wire uh, on the exterior. This makes me think they're going to use shotcrete or some kind of uh, plaster on the exterior of the wall, the same as they have on the third building over there. Here's a closer look at the chicken wire I was referencing. It serves as a kind of scaffolding to hold up the plaster material that gives it the smooth concrete looking finish. On the 3D printed home, this step is not required. You just paint probably a latex based paint and the exterior is complete. This is quite a successful print. Since I've started covering these projects, the lines have been improved. On this side, they haven't gone through nearly as much effort to conceal the building, so we get a better look at it without the uh, covering here. So the paint makes it look a little bit nicer, cleaner than the regular concrete, which can have some changes in coloration depending on the day and the parameters that they were printing with. The patio came out great. They were describing the goals they had with this building, the high roof and the kitchen. It's an open space that will be very considerate for its occupants. There's even a 3D printed breakfast bar in there. The beginning of a trend that I think will continue throughout the span of this industry where people start to implement more printed objects within their home. They just need the consideration because once it's printed, concrete's not very easy to move. So it's not for the faint of heart. Here's the completed house that they've plastered over with probably a gypsum based material. So it looks like concrete, uh, like this also looks like concrete, but neither of these materials are actually concrete. This house is printed with a mortar, meaning all of the aggregates are below two millimeters. Kobod recently announced that they have a new material system setup that can print with any kind of local mix as long as you use 1% of their magic solution. I'm not exactly sure what this will require and what kind of equipment you'll need to run this material, but we'll see them at World of Concrete, so hopefully we can ask them about that and learn more about the viability of this new material solution that they've provided. This video is sponsored by the Virtual Village of Printed Houses. This is my members exclusive portion of my website where you can access all of the digital 360 tours that I've taken inside of 3D printed buildings and also see the videos of my interviews with CEOs and founders from the 3D printed construction industry. This is an insightful collection of information that's very useful to anybody looking to pursue this exciting and new industry. It's going to require tons of people to learn more about this space for it to really grow into what I think it can be in the future. I might even build some type of course so that people could learn on a faster pace 
and really have a firm understanding rather than jumping through a bunch of random YouTube videos. Let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in a 3D printed construction course that would describe the equipment, materials, and options you have when pursuing a 3D printed construction business. This course would really save me a lot of time because at the moment I do a lot of consulting calls one on one. Instead of doing a consulting call, I think it would probably provide more value to the customer for me to pre-create maybe three to five hours of content so that they can really dive in deep. And then if they want to have a call after that, it would be much more productive because instead of just catching them up, they'll probably have questions that'll make me think of new things too. As we've discussed in the previous videos I did at this project, this is a Habitat for Humanity house. They're a fantastic organization and you should certainly consider donating in the link below. They've clearly demonstrated a commitment to their pursuit of providing more affordable housing by experimenting with new technologies. Most of the companies we've seen so far don't come from construction backgrounds, but Habitat for Humanity has immense construction experience. So by having teams of very experienced general contractors on these types of jobs, they're improving much faster. When it comes to a real world construction job site, plans and things that you came up with at a computer don't always work in real life. This is why basically every single construction project in America has change orders constantly. This is where you really see the difference between book smarts and street smarts. There are tons of contractors with no college educations, maybe they even dropped out of high school, but they know how to make it work on the job site. Seasoned individuals in the construction industry are more important than ever. This technology will depend on them to improve and be implemented. So long as the demand for homes outpaces the supply, there will be no shortage of need for people in this industry. Hopefully, because Habitat is a nonprofit organization, they'll release some data from this project and we'll be able to see the cost comparison from the three stick built homes to the 3D printed home. It will definitely be an eye opener because I don't think there is any other circumstance where a regular house has been built right next to a 3D printed house at the same time and the same relative footprint. If you've enjoyed this video or learned anything, make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss my updates in the future on this project and all the other 3D printed construction projects around the world. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I recently attended World of Concrete 2022, where I found all kinds of interesting automated construction companies showcasing their technologies. I'll certainly try to make it back again next year. I bet there'll be even more technology companies as engineering and technology begins to truly automate the construction industry. I'll be sure to attend more conferences in the future. It's a great way to find new technologies just walking around. And since everybody is in the swing of doing presentations anyway, they're great on camera. I even got footage at the facility of a geopolymer 3D printing company. Geopolymers are something frequently referenced as the future of 3D printing to reduce emissions and improve the environmental impact that this technology will have on the world. Most of the time, it's only used as a buzzword. But this technology also seen in the pyramids and Roman concrete is actually being implemented by some companies here in Vegas. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be sure not to miss the next upload. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.